verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. What is his throne? What is heaven? Now, by the way, yeah, heaven doesn't mean this outer space now. It means the dead heavens, the realm, after this atmospheric realm. When you go, you are sent off. That's where his throne is. He sits on that majestic throne. I will take you quickly to Isaiah 6 and you read something with me. If you have your Bible, just check that. Let's read something there quickly. Hallelujah. Say, I'm getting blessed. Say, this is the good news of the kingdom. Now I'm rediscovering my father. Come on, say, now I'm rediscovering my father. In the year that King Mosiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. High and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twin, he covered his face. See, you can't see the face of the Lord. When Isaiah said he saw the Lord, in effect, he saw glimpses of what would be like the structure of a human being, and he knew it was the Lord. You can't totally see the Lord. In fact, God said to Moses, if you have to see me, you have to die. When he went on the mount and came back, his face became so glistering after the encounter with God that he had to put on a bag. People could not look at Moses. Say transformation. You spend time in his presence, you go back and fuse with exceptional divine energy. This church service will come for 30 minutes and leave God and go home. We can't impact this God. Oh no, he says, above this to the seraphim, this one has six weeks with twain and covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angels, armies, heavenly armies, angels. The whole earth is full of his glory. How many understand that? Now, if you read further, you go down, you will see an amazing description of who God is. That aside, let's go back to this, this one. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Where is the kingdom of God? In the hearts of men, right here on earth, through you and me, right now, manifesting as his power, creating impact, changing perspectives. When the kingdom of God comes, it delivers men from oppression. Let me pause here and say something quickly. Elections are coming very soon to the general election, right? I want to say this to all the people of God listening. Only go for the interest of God, amen. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 10. If there is any political leader whose ambitions do not reflect the interests of God, you have no right to go for it. I can't vote for anybody who promotes gay relationship, who promotes drunkenness, who legalizes smoking alcohol and all of that, smoking cigarettes, drunkenness and alcohol. I can't vote for that. It's not the interest of heaven. Praise God. That's inspiration for you. Psalm 33 verse 9 says, For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood still. That's our God. The great commander in chief. The man who speaks and he becomes. His spirit is everything we are mentioned right there, the king of his kingdom. And his kingdom moves over all. This is why it's so safe for you to be a citizen of God's kingdom. When I'm saying so, some people are attacking, saying stupid things online, online. They think that I'm inventing a new message. Read your Bible. You don't understand the kingdom. Submit to those who understand and learn. He said we should seek first his kingdom. His life was all about his kingdom. All about his kingdom. It's a country. And he calls us citizens of his kingdom, not even subjects. Human kingdoms have people who are subjects. The king lost over them. But not in the kingdom of God, we are citizens. Treated as we are nationals of the country. We are called ambassadors. Why all these evil terms? Why does the Bible describe the church as Ecclesia, the central governing body of God? So we are an embassy, we are a foreign establishment right here to colonize earth for heaven. It's always been about colonization and dominion. His kingdom rules over all. And his kingdom is not of this world. John 18, 36. Let's define God again. Psalms 115. This is what I actually call the reserved, exceptional power of God. He says, Our God is in heaven. He does what is the same. Who can control God? This is why some people think they can manipulate God. You can. You do certain things and you think he's not saying he sees all things. Let's define God further. <laughs> Isaiah 66 verse 1. This is what the Lord says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Can you make him a house? That kind of magnificent description, the God that encompasses the entire vastness of the universe and the atmospheres. Can you build him a house? Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Say created. The word there is Barakah, 
that actually means to form something out of nothing. It's the Hebrew word, that's amazing. So literally, everything came from the hand of God. That's why the Bible describes God as being omnipotent, omnipotent, full of potential, power, dormant power, unused power. Think about it. That after all this complexity of this vastness of the universe that we can't explain, the Bible still says, God's here is the power of Jesus Christ. And he permitted you and me to test of this power as his children. Say with it means power to be fighting this in life. Psalm 4 and 10 verse 19. Let me repeat that to you. This scripture says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Where is his throne? Where is his throne? That's why his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is of the kingdom of God is from heaven. It is the kingdom which is from heaven. That's why it's also said at times the kingdom of heaven. But in clear descriptive terms, the kingdom of heaven is where God is dwelling precisely. That's the domain he is really. And the kingdom of God is here on earth. It's the kingdom of heaven and trapped in one man as the Holy Ghost manifesting the culture of God through the word. Say and bless. His kingdom rules over all. Hallelujah. Let's define God. Do you understand the definition of God already? He's a ruler. Now, I'd like you to look at that. That's a right. The world map. Are you seeing that? The outer space. Next thing, you see this? These are satellite images, pictures taken of this entire universe. The Mickey would have all of that. Look at the galaxies, the planets. What's my point? The complexity of the Milky Way and its orderliness very much define God. Who put all these things in motion? How can Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, Neptune, and the rest, they are all moving, you know, around their various axes without touching and clashing on each other? Why was the earth so carefully made in such a way that it should not be too far from the sun? How comes life cannot exist in no other planet except Earth? Check your Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 2 again, verse 1. And the earth. The earth is single out as an exceptional plan where life has to work. That's why when scientists say they are going to live in Mars and Buffy, it will never work. Man was destined to dwell here on Earth. That's what I call the fully of scientific, scientific advancement. So go discover that school, document that school. It proves all the more the authenticity of God. So who is God? Creator of the entire universe. The man who reserves all the power can call the shots at any time and do anything wherever he wants it, anytime he wants it. The Lord will do a new thing for you. Amen. A miracle will happen in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. A miracle will happen in your life in the name of Jesus. Let's define your name. Acts chapter 17, verse 25, that's Paul talking. And he is not served by human hands. As if he needed anything. Does God need anything? In fact, Psalm 50 verse 12 says, even if I'm hungry, I'm not. That's God talking. <laughs> Love for Jesus. Love for Jesus. Why does God need nothing? We are talking about a self-existent God. That's your father. That's the one you are worshiping all the time. He's here right now. He says, because he himself gives all men life. Who gives men all men life? So when people brag about life as though they have it, and they think they can give men life and laugh to scorn. And breath and everything else, you remember Genesis chapter 2 verse 7? After forming this man, the Bible says he breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life. That word breath there is nema. Uh, no, no, that word breath there actually means spirit, excuse me please. And the Greek description of the Holy Spirit is nema, it's like a current of air, wind, that gives life. This God can resurrect dead things, I prophesy to you. Whatever has been dead in your life, life touches in Jesus' name. Amen. On account of this ministration and those of you who are watching this, the Lord causes vitality to come to any dead thing in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will see blessings. Psalm 60 verse 12, I already gave you that reference. Let's define God again. So God is life. Behind life you are having this living, you know, you are having right and this living experience. It's God sustaining you. Say salvation. salvation. I love Jesus and I love the kingdom message he brought. Because when I read him and study him and bless even much more. Let me say something to you. Church, I believe, according to my study of the scriptures, is not a place we come to just hear spiritual things and be loaded with power and go back. We must live from this place and be able to effect some drastic driving changes in whatever we are called to do. I am embracing ambassadors in the health sector in the making, in politics in the making, in all business establishments in the making, 
men who understand exactly how the kingdom work and are willing to take the will of God into every walk of life. Check my teachings. You will understand. And when men don't understand what I'm called to do, they think they are, I'm bringing something new. When we talk prosperity and business summits, they laugh at it. Say the church now we're talking business and the rest, they have no idea. To colonize the head, that means we enter into all the systems that control the head. And so far, you and my scholars have seen about 12 different systems that control life on earth. We want to hear some? Education is a system, pharmaceutical industry is a system, political system, administration, justice, and law, and all of that. These are systems of governance. And for God so love the world, the okay, system, the world, world there means these governing systems. We have to take the gospel of the kingdom to the world, all right? And that word is Gentile, which also means nation, which also means ethnic. The word is ethnic, it also means what? Governing systems. <laughs> Salvation is found in no one else. Read that after me. Salvation, Salvation. is found <laughs> in no one else. No Continue. Else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Shout hallelujah. Wow. You have no idea. That means there is only one name that genuinely saves man from sin and also delivers man from daily problems. The name of Jesus. Allah cannot save. Muhammad cannot save. Confucius cannot save. Buddha cannot say, founders of all Muslims, whoever claims to be a savior cannot. They are humans with dirty blood, and their blood cannot wash sins. It takes the true blood of Jesus to be great men from problems. That's my God. He's my salvation. You have no idea. If you understand this and change these perspectives, no name is given under heaven by which man can be saved. Salvation is found only in Jesus. That is why you must believe He created you. You are a sinner, he came on earth again to redeem you from sin, died his long wash your sins away, accept it, confess it with your mouth, then you'll be saved. And when you are saved, John 1 12, when he endorses, he gives you power, authority, legal right to exercise dominion on earth as a son. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. That's the name that saves. In fact, bless us in Greek. Jesus bless us in Greek. That's what I mean, saving of salvation. In Hebrew, it's, you know, Yeshua HaMashiach. It actually is against salvation. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. Name goes with destiny and calling. Praise God. Paul understood this and he said, Guys, you think men can save you, you are religious, and there's no way. By law, only one name says of death. That's my God. Praise God. Let's define God. We're so happy. Oh, praise God. <laughs> the heavens. <laughs> This is the part that will inspire me and inspire you more. Look at that verse again. In Psalms 19, look at what it says. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Read that again. You see that? The heavens declare the glory of God. <laughs> the skies proclaim the work of Jesus. Imagine that nature itself is talking about that great God. Praise God. Nature is talking about the greatness of God, and a man sees someone and says, There's no God. Call him a fool. Say, Fool. It's a thoughtless, clueless, foolish person. <laughs> Read that Psalms 19, it will bless you. It goes for us to say, <laughs> Day after day, they pour for speech. They keep talking. You wake up today, the grass is green. Tomorrow, the skies are that. The stars are right there, shining, and all of that. All these crazy things. Mountains are coming, eruptions are coming. All these things in nature, they declare, they utter speech. They say that there's someone right there that created these things and put them in motion. There is a good song by Nathan Yebesi. Uh, he sings about, you know, uh, you are amazing, oh Lord. He, you know, he, he talks about everything God did, the creation, and I think his meditation on this thing changed things a lot. Praise God. Control that chair. Praise God. See, day after day, they pour for speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. Good God. You want to know about God? You want to know about God? Study nature. When I'm watching National Geographic Channel, you come to the house, you think that I am looking at something so deep. You should study it and see how the ecosystem how they all relate. Follow me now. Check this. Many bits, what do they eat? 
cars are moving, flies are hanging on them, birds are coming and feeding on the flies. While one is serving another person, say pangolin. I was watching one of them. You know a pangolin? It's a special animal with this hard scales. Guess what pangolins like? I mean, moving and rubbing their bone and joint. The fecal matter of the leopard or a cheetah. They know it so much. When you put the most out there in the water, where do they live That's why fishes can survive in the ground. All interconnected. It's so complex and crazy. It makes me fear God. If the nature speaks about God, say if the nature speaks about God. So you want to understand who your God is, look at nature. Let's define God for Praise God. Psalm 50 verse 12. I'm talking about a God that knows all things. This is what it says. If I were hungry, I would not know what. For the world is mine and all that is in it. So you see, sometimes when we see, if in church you bless the works of God, you think you are giving God money. You cannot. You need God for everything. All things at all times. And He eventually needs you for nothing. Without you, he will still be God. He created you. You are not being alive, may not necessarily mean anything to him. If he wants to do anything to you, he can do it. If I were at home in Psalm 50 verse 12, what would I do? I would like to tell you, for the world is mine, and what? All that is in it. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Let's define God again in a very special way. And I want to link this now and culminate and linking this to man so you understand. Man desires power to control the circumstances of his life. Everyone sitting here listening to me and those online. If you have 100 people, chances are that 80 percent of them are overwhelmed by certain issues in their life. They don't really know how to fix it. What will a father do when a child is sick and he doesn't know what to do with that child? He's gone to all hospitals and he's been told. Nothing can be done. If that man had a way to fix that problem, wouldn't he look for that problem, the solution? Power to control circumstances. In fact, can I say this to you with confidence? When God is mentioned, think of power. When God is mentioned, think of what? Power. And that's what man is always longing for. Hey, by the way, why are people joining courts? Why are people going to a court? They want power. Why do people want to get money at all costs? Why are people scamming? They want power. Power to control things. Praise God. Man is always searching for God. The search for God by man is the search for what? Protection. Man wants protection from enemies. Man wants protection from troubles. And so when many cannot be patient to find out because God has not been properly unveiled to them, do you know what they do? They go to that name there. The Hebrew word, El, is the description of God. We want to talk about the Hebrew. Why? Because this is his choosing favorite people. He wanted to colonize the earth. And he had to choose a race of people to colonize the earth. And the Hebrews were designated by him. And we are the elected of the Lord. Okay. So the Hebrews understood God in a different way because all other nations had their gods they were worshipping. Their own God they couldn't see, but they could relate with through supernatural encounters. When God now revealed himself to them in diverse ways, starting as far back as Genesis chapter 6, the floods and all of that, they saw that we can describe God by one word, say El. Say El. That's why we hear Jehovah El Shaddai, El this, El Rohim, and all of that. El simply means supernatural being with great miraculous power, great protection power. A being that is so supernatural we cannot fathom. Even in the original Hebrew, the Jews don't even want to call God by his name. They put a description of Jehovah or Yahweh, or, or not, not Yahweh, that the spelling you can't even pronounce because they are so afraid when they understood God, they are so afraid to even call his name. Think about it. Praise God. Praise God. That's your father. And this same God I'm talking right now is the one busy fixing things for you by the work of the angels. You go back home, you see problems resolved by the power of Jesus' name. Hey, can I show you something now, summarily? 